Hey guys, this is Dr. Sangeet and welcome back to another lecture of Dental Patshala where we help you understand and learn dentistry better and easy way and today's topic we are going to talk about the diseases of salivary gland. So without further ado, let's get started. And welcome back to another 10 in 10 series where we cover each topic under 10 headings in 10 minutes. And today's topic is adenoid cystic carcinoma. As the name suggests carcinoma, that means this is going to be a malignant neoplasm. So the adenoid cystic carcinoma, also known as the cylindroma, was first reported by Bill Roth in 1856. And it was termed as the adenoid cystic carcinoma by space in 1930. So this is a malignant neoplasm as the name suggests carcinoma. That means this is going to be a malignant tumor of what? Of minor salivary gland. Majorly it covers the minor salivary gland. Till now that we have covered the benign neoplasm that was one was the pleomorphic adenoma which is our the mixed salivary gland, benign mixed salivary gland. Then we had studied the adenolymphoma or warthin tumor which was the majorly the parotid gland benign tumor. Now we are talking about the adenoid cystic carcinoma which is a malignant neoplasm. Now what is the tendency of this particular tumor? What is the specific feature is that it has got a tendency to invade into the perineural lymphatic space. So it has got a neural connection. So it has... Uh, what is the specific feature is that this tumor surrounds the nerve trunk and it spreads along with the nerve. So there is a tendency to invade into the perineural lymphatic space. And this is the re reason that this adenoid cystic carcinoma or ACC is painful. Rest of the tumors which we have studied are painless tumors. But there is a pain which is associated with the adenoid cystic carcinoma. This is also known as cylindroma. Why cylindroma? Because the connective tissue is hyalinized and it surrounds the tumor cells by forming the structural pattern of cylinders. Therefore, the name cylindroma. So guys, malignant neoplasm, it, the ACC has got the tendency to invade into the perineural lymphatic space. So it goes into the lymphatic space of the nerve and it spreads along with that. Now, how the which, which gland it involves? It involves all the glands, majorly the minor salivary gland it involves and also the parotid gland which is only 6% occurrence. 5th, 6th and 7th decade of life and females are most commonly affected. So it involves both the glands, minor as well as the major salivary gland. If we look at the common site for minor salivary gland is the palate and the tongue. For major salivary gland, it is not parotid gland majorly. Major uh, common site for major salivary gland is the submandibular salivary gland. So there is going to be a slow, enlarging, ulcerated, nodular growth. So, see, the specification of this carcinoma is actually different than the other carcinoma. The difference is that, first of all, it is ulcerated. Previously, we have studied that the non-ulcerated smooth surfaces, right? Also, previously, we have studied that all the ulcer, all the neoplasm were painless. ECC is a painful. All the neoplasm, we have studied that they are movable. They are not fixed to the underlying structures. But ECC, on the other hand, it is painful. Now, the pain is the most common complaint of the patient. And we also see the fixation and the induration of the underlying structures. Now, when it is, uh, the lesions can sometime invade into the, uh, when lesion is towards the parotid gland, then the, it can invade into the facial nerve sheath. And also ACC frequently invades the lingual as well as the hypoglossal nerve. And if the, there is palatal paresthesia, then we can see the involvement of the greater palatine nerve. So we can see there is an association of the nerve. So tumor surrounds the nerve trunk. 
This is the main feature of adenoid cystic carcinoma or cylindroma. We can say that it invades into the perineural lymphatic space. There is the tumor surrounds the nerve trunk. So what happens? The growth, the nodular growth, it resembles the eccentric node. But on the surface, we can see that there is ulcerations which are present. Now see, previously we have studied that other surface of the other carcinomas were smooth. Also we have previously studied that the ulcers, that the uh, tumors were painless. But on the other hand, if we look at ACC, while we look at the ACC, we will see that the growth is nodular as well as ulcerated. And patient often complains of pain in case of adenoid cystic carcinoma. If we see the histological cross section, then the, the histopathological section, the epithelium resembles the basal cell of the oral epithelium and it has the hyperchromatic nuclei. We see that there is a double layer of the tumor cells which is arranged in a duct-like or a cylinder-like pattern which contains the eosinophilic cobulum at the center and it gives rise to appearance similar to the Swiss cheese. That is why the appearance histopathologically we say that this is a Swiss cheese appearance. How the Swiss cheese? See, imagine there are double layers of the tumor cells and there is a duct or cylinder like pattern which contains the eosinophilic cobulum at the center. So it is like both the cells, the double layer of cells have got a center, a cylinder which is in between the center of these, eusino, these tumor cells. So that is the, I uh, see, suppose on um, all the epithelium like there is going to be holes, there are going to be cylinders. If we look at, so it will look like the Swiss cheese appearance, the Swiss cheese which we have seen in the Tom and Jerry, uh, the Tom and Jerry uh, cartoon serials, right? So the, if we look at the connective tissue, the connective tissue is hyalinized. That surrounds the tumor cells by forming a structural pattern like the cylinder. And hence the name cylindroma is given to adenoid cystic carcinoma. And there are also histological subtypes to it. So histologically we have three patterns of adenoid cystic carcinoma. These are the scribriform pattern, the solid pattern and the tubular pattern, right? So these scribriform pattern is the most classical histological pattern of the ACC and what happens in this pattern we see that there is a proliferating mass of the epithelial cells. They are being penetrated by cylindrical space and they produce an appearance which is known as the cribriform appearance. That is why the cribriform pattern. The solid pattern and this the tumor cells, they proliferate to form a solid mass with the area of central necrosis. So in between these tumor cells, there is a central necrosis, therefore the solid pattern. In the tubular pattern, these tumor cells, they are, uh, they are proliferating uh, as small tubular units with single central lumen inside. So they uh, appear more like a tubular pattern, they appear more like a tubular unit, therefore the tubular pattern. So there can be the histological subtypes. Now see the important thing which you have to remember is why cylindroma because these tumor cells, they see suppose this is one tumor cell, this is another tumor cell, this is third tumor cell, in between there is there is the hole, this actually this cylinder like pattern which contains the eosinophilic coagulum. So if we see it is more like a tubular, it looks like more a tube when uh, all of these epithelial if we look at and multiply, if we are going to multiply these, these into multiple units. So we see multiple cylinders or multiple holes in between which gives the appearance of the Swiss cheese. That is why the, the histologically we say that uh, there is a Swiss cheese appearance of adenoid cystic carcinoma or ACC. The specific or characteristics or the typical feature of ACC is that the tumor cells spread via the perineural or the interneural space we call the neurotropism. So there is a neurotropism which occurs in 80% of the cases of ACC adenoid cystic carcinoma we see. So this is the important feature of ACC is that, see the other name is cylindroma because of the histological view. The uh, and adenoid, adenoid cystic carcinoma, you have to always remember that there is a nerve, there is a nerve involvement, there is a neural involvement. 
so it spreads via the perineural lymphatic space you have to remember in the acc that is the only thing which you have to remember so how do we treat it via the surgical excision also we can give the radiotherapy after the surgery so post surgical radiotherapy can also be given so this is about the acc i hope that you have enjoyed the video so if you have liked the video give it a thumbs up also you can comment in the comment section below and there is a link in the description box below to support me on ptm as well as on paypal to make free videos for you guys and to make free notes so till then keep reading keep learning stay motivated i will see you soon in the next video